Well, it's getting close to Christmas, and uh, but I want to think for just a minute about birthdays. How old were you when you stopped getting all the candles that represented your age to blow out? Anybody remember? Was it 10, 11, 12, when it became a fire hazard? <laughs> For some of us, it would be a big fire hazard. We couldn't blow them out before they even just start melting in the cake. And you don't want that wax in the cake, right? You know, it's kind of an interesting tradition to blow out candles that represent your birthday. And then you're supposed to make a wish, and you're not supposed to tell anybody what you wish for or it won't come true, right? That's kind of a weird tradition, isn't it, too? I'm not, I'm not superstitious, so I don't believe in all that hooly baloo, but um, I believe in prayer, not wishing. But for the purpose of this exercise, if you, if you had one wish, if you had one wish and you could wish for anything, and it would come true, what would you wish for? Anybody? This is audience participation time. That everybody you know would accept Jesus. Very nice. Anybody else? Peace on earth. Peace on earth. Cake? <laughs> cake. Nice. You would wish for cake. I think we can make that happen. Anybody else? And you can't say that you would wish for more wishes. That does, that's not how that works. There's always somebody in the crowd who says, I would like to wish for more wishes. <laughs> if you're that guy, or yeah. Anyway, well... When the, when the angels came to announce the birth of Christ, does anybody remember what the angels said? Luke chapter 2, verse 14. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. We can wish for a lot of things, but we can have a certainty in peace that only God can provide. There are times when Jesus would heal somebody and he would tell them to go in peace. When he appeared to the disciples after the resurrection, he said to them, peace be with you. The apostle Paul would often start his letters with grace and peace. Some of you are on the ball. Okay. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So look at all of those passages where it says, He's, he wrote that at the beginning of his letter. Almost, I think pretty much every letter. Now I had a question recently, like how do we know who wrote the Bible and how do we know it's authenticity and that sort of thing? Well, some of that's above my pay grade, though I did study in seminary and uh, there are lots of uh, historical, archeological and uh, textual criticism that help us to have a really good idea of what is included in the Bible is actually God's word. But, <laughs> You know, how do you know who wrote what? Well, we know that Paul wrote these passages because he started his letter with grace and peace to you. And that's not found in all the other letters that people wrote, like James, for example. Or, and we know that uh, in Hebrews and Acts, Paul didn't probably write those because this sort of writing, his style of writing is not included in that. Well, anyway, that's uh, just a little bit of free information I just threw in there. Well, instead of grace and peace, Paul could have said a lot of things. He could have said grace and power, grace and riches, grace and TikTok fame. He could have said a lot of things, grace and, but he didn't. He said grace and peace to you because there's something about peace. And isn't peace something that everybody wants in their life? They may not know that they need it. They may not know how to get it. But for many people in the world, peace is the missing piece in their life. We're talking about a peace that can only come from God. Uh, you can have all the money in the world and not have peace. I've known multimillionaires who had no peace in their life. They had everything imaginable, every toy, every gadget, gadget toy, uh, car, house, imaginable but they didn't have peace. You can have incredible success on the outside, fame and fortune, but be empty on the inside. You can be married, but not have peace in your home. No shalom in the home. Instead of peace, most people have the opposite of peace. Anxiety, tension, 
stress, fear. When you think about your family, you want to be at peace with them. But often there are times we have strife instead due to misunderstandings, disagreements, hurt feelings, bitterness, unforgiveness. I hope that you had a peaceful thanksgiving with family and or friends. I did and I was, that's what I was thankful for. It was really cool. I walked into the, uh, you know how there's a, a kid room and an adult room and I go back and forth between those because I fit both categories. <laughs> but now the kids aren't little anymore and uh, so I walked in and I was the last one to get my food and I just popped my head in to see what they were doing and they were all giving thanks for what they're thankful for. And they let me stay and I, I said I was thankful for for a peaceful family that we can get along we look forward to being together and uh, and, that, and it all started with uh, you know grandparents and great grandparents who laid that foundation in Jesus because if you're all following Jesus you should all be going the same way well I would submit to you that what so many people really want and really need in their lives is peace so let's take a look good look at the good book to find this piece that we need in our lives, and we're going to jump into the Old Testament. Uh, and when Isaiah wrote uh, these verses, there was a lot of fear, there was a lot of chaos in the nation, and Isaiah prophesied that one day there would be peace instead of distress. Isaiah chapter 26, verse 1. In that day, everyone in the land of Judah will sing this song. Our city is strong. We're surrounded by the walls of God's salvation. Open the gates to all who are righteous and allow the faithful to enter. And then we jump down to verse 3, which we're really going to land on. You will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you, all whose thoughts are fixed on you. We can find perfect peace when we trust in the Lord, when our thoughts are fixed on Him, Isaiah writes. But I don't know about you, but when I don't focus on him and I focus on my problems, I lose my peace. You know, the word peace comes from the Old Testament, and it's a rich Hebrew word. It's shalom. It's shalom. It's actually a Jewish greeting for when you would meet and leave someone, you would greet them with the word shalom. And Shalom means way more than just peace. It means more than just peace. I don't know about you, but a lot of times I have thought about peace as the absence of something else. Like the absence of conflict, the absence of strife, peace being the absence of war. But the truth is, the absence of war from, from the nearest of kin to nations to nations is mostly the presence of some form of truce and not peace. It is just old conflict buried like landmines across the field of our hearts, quietly waiting to be triggered when someone steps on the tripwire. And then we go off. Maybe that was your Thanksgiving. I hope not. I hope no tripwires were or landmines went off, but sometimes that happens. Shalom means much more than a truce. Shalom means something like all of the broken and dislocated parts of creation, all the broken and dislocated pieces of our relationships, all the broken and dislocated pieces of our heart, put back together by God to be whole, to be healthy, to be complete. Only God can do that. When I was uh, younger, my friend Brian and I would uh, pitch to each other in our, at my house and uh, we had a wall like this, the cinder block, and above it was uh, some, you know, siding. So if you threw it high and wide, you'd get the siding, which wasn't good. 
And if you got too low, you would get mom's rose bushes, which was not good. So we had to really, you know, lock it in. Well, one day we had been swimming and doing different things because we had a pool. And my dad always tried to make a pool into a garden because it was a lot of work. And now as an adult, I realize I get it. I get it. I get it why he didn't like the pool. Uh, but then we loved it. So we get out of the pool. We're a little bit wet. And we decide to play a little baseball. And I grab the bat. And, uh, man, I swung like there was like King Kong. There was no... And uh, it went out of my hands and went right through a, uh, a six by nine plate glass window that is way away from the playing field, but somehow, and it shattered into a million pieces. And there's just no, as much as I would have liked to have taken all those broken pieces and put them back together, it wasn't gonna happen. Sometimes our hearts or our relationships feel that shattered and only God can put them back together. That's, that's shalom. Isn't that so much more? I mean, peace is great, but this is a peace that reflects wholeness and completeness. The shalom of God, the peace of God is actually one of the deepest essences of agape. We've talked about agape before. It's God's love, God's style of love. Think about what happened when Jesus, who was supposed to be dead and buried, and he walks into the most broken, the most discouraged room in history, to greet the 11 most wanted men in the country. Notice how he greets them. That Sunday evening, the disciples were meeting behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. They thought they were next to hang on a cross. Suddenly, Jesus was standing there among them. Peace be with you, he said. Now, knowing what we know about Shalom, right? Doesn't that take on a, a, a different meaning now? Peace be with you, he said. As he spoke, he showed them the wounds in his hands and his side, and they were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. Again, he said, peace be with you. It was so nice, he said it twice. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. Now, anytime... Jesus said something twice, we should take notice, right? He wanted them to know, beyond the shadow of a doubt, that everything was going to be okay. That his peace would be with them. Is it any wonder that the Old Testament prophets referred to Jesus as the Prince of Peace? So peace means wholeness, completeness, bringing everything together to be whole. Complete and perfect peace with God and perfect peace with that we can only get from God. And God wants to give us his peace to restore the most broken places in our innermost being. To restore peace in the most broken relationships in your family, your church family, or friend groups. Jesus extends his nail-scarred hands and speaks the word to you and to me. Peace be with you. No matter what is going around you, your circumstances, he's saying peace be with you. And the only qualification that we can have for giving this peace to others, passing on the peace, is to receive it first. You can't give what you don't have. Now to be clear, peace does not mean that you're not going to have problems. In fact, Jesus said to his disciples in John 16, 33, in this world, you will have trouble. In other words, just because you decide to follow me, it's not going to be always smooth. It's not always going to be level. It's going to be hilly. It's going to be bumpy. It's going to get crazy. You're going to need your seatbelt. It doesn't mean that your kids aren't going to get in a fight on the way to church. It doesn't mean that your spouse isn't going to get on your nerves because I most definitely will. Not that it ever happens in the parsonage or even happened this morning. Um... <laughs> Dear ones, peace is not found in the absence of problems. Peace is found in the presence of God. When our thoughts are fixed on him, like Isaiah said. So maybe you're thinking, where's my peace? My body is wrecked with pain right now. I'm trying to hold it together financially. The bills are piling up. I've got a child struggling with an addiction. Where is the peace in that? Where is the shalom in my home? Scripture tells us how to experience that peace. But we need to understand that the battle for peace begins in our minds.
because there's a war in your mind. We learned about that recently in 1 Peter chapter 3. How we're at, there are things that are seen, there are things that are unseen. So I can know the truth about God, but then my mind can wander into all sorts of untruths. Or I can believe wholeheartedly that the promises of God are true for, you, for thee, but not me. Do we ever do that? We give advice to somebody else. Hey, you just need to claim this promise, but do we claim it for ourselves? Do we really believe it for ourselves? There's a war going on in our minds between what God says and what my mind tends to wrongly believe. That, that's true of the song that Luann sang. Are we going to believe what God says about us? Or are we going to believe what we say about us? The battle for peace belongs and begins in your mind. So let's jump back to Isaiah 26, 3. You will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you and all whose thoughts are fixed on you. So you want to have peace? Keep your thoughts fixed on God and his word and his truth. And you don't get that perfect peace. You don't get that perfect peace when your mind is fixed on anything else, dear ones. Now, the, the Hebrew word for fixed means to lean on completely, to rest fully oneself on, leaning your mind on God. Fully resting yourself on his word and his promises. So what is your mind fixed on? What are you leaning into? If you're leaning, I'm glad that this table is strong. But God's word is stronger. And if you will lean into it, you will not be disappointed. You will always be held up. So what are you, what are your mind, what is your mind fixed on? Where does your mind drift to? What consumes your mind? You see, you will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you, all whose thoughts are fixed on God. So when is the God of peace with you? When your mind is fixed on him. His promises are true. His word never fails. So when I'm lost, he is my guide. When I'm weak, he is strong. When I'm hurting, he is my healer. Fix your minds on him. So, if you take one thing away, peace is not found in the absence of problems. It is found in the presence of God. You can have peace in the good times, and you can have peace on the dark days. You see, one day the disciples were afraid for their lives. They were out on a boat, and a big storm blew up, and they were freaking out. And while they're freaking out, and the storm is blowing, somehow Jesus... Uh, was taking a nap. I don't even think he took any melatonin because he was just at peace. And uh, Pastor Craig Rochelle says there were two storms that day. One was the visible to the eye, the thunder, the lightning, the wind, the waves, the visible storm. And the second storm was on the inside, inside the disciples because they were freaking out. And often it is the storm inside of us that is the tougher of the two. Would you agree? I can look good on the outside, you can ask me how I'm doing, and I'll say fine, and I might look fine to you, but the storm on the inside can be filled with fear and anxiety, doubt, and worry. It was the storm on the inside that caused the disciples to ask Jesus, do you even care if we die? Can you imagine asking Jesus that? Do you even care if we die? For some of you, the storm on the inside today is causing you to doubt the goodness of God. Maybe even doubt His existence. But Jesus gets up out of His sleep, gets to sleep out of His eyes and says, Peace be still. And the wind and the waves obey Him. I, don't, I hope you've experienced this as well, though I, 
I don't hope that you've been through the pucker brush, but I suspect that if you live at any time on this earth, you have. It's amazing to me, and I can't explain it. On some of the most difficult days in my life, I have been kept in perfect peace, like Isaiah talked about. It's not often, because I don't want you to worry about me, but there have been times when I would pray and cry for days dealing with a problem, and the battle was in the mind, and when I was focused on God and His Word and His promises, there would be peace in the storm. But when my mind would wander and I would worry, the storm both outside and inside would rage. I don't even know how it's possible. I can't explain it to have that kind of peace in God when everything is going kaput. Or at least it seems like it. And inside you can have peace. The Bible says it's the peace that passes all understanding. Because we can't understand it. So it's easy to praise God when things are going good. But real praise is when you can thank Him even when you're in the middle of the storm. Did you know that you can pray Scripture? You can just insert your name or you can just claim it as your own and pray it to God. Remind Him. I, I don't, he doesn't need reminding, but it, it's good to verbalize it even to God. And one, one Scripture to pray for yourself is Philippians. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Then, 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 you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything that we can understand. That's where the King James says it passes all understanding. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Guess what? Your, your mind and your heart needs guarding because it's going to wander off and you're going to think crazy things and you're going to worry and you're going to get stressed when you don't really need to. This is saying that His peace will guard our hearts and our minds from the danger. Guarding the door, door of a heart, not letting any junk come through. It's a peace of God. In other words, the world can't give this kind of peace and the world can't take away this kind of peace. Woo! Isn't that great news? The world can't give it. The world can't take it away. It's yours. God gives you that peace. Nobody can take it. Because this is a peace that does not come from the world. This is a peace that only comes from God. Peace is not just the absence of heartache. It's not the absence of loss. It's, not, it's the presence of God. So whatever you're going through right now, and I don't know. I don't know what you're going through. Fill in the blank. Fix your thoughts on Him. Don't worry. Pray. Thank Him. You get His peace. He is with you now. Maybe this word is for you. I hope it's for someone did today. Peace be with you. Go in peace. His peace is available for you. And not the kind of peace that we typically think about, but that shalom peace. The peace that can mend and heal what is broken. May God's peace that passes all understanding guard your hearts and your minds and your souls. Let's pray.